Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to, to Time with Shanti. This afternoon, we have the privilege and the honor of having our last interview with Professor Aite. The first two ones have been wonderful. A lot of information has been passed on to us. For those who don't know what we've been up to in the last two interviews, we have it on YouTube. So you can always check it out on YouTube, Time with Shanti. And um, please, when you go watching a video, subscribe so that subsequent videos we put together will be made available to you. Um, today's interview will be in two parts. The first one will be the finale of um, the Achimota discussions that we've been having. And then the second part will be we celebrating the prof. So please make time for us this afternoon as we delve into the Achimota issues and what we have in mind and in place to resolve some of these issues. The whole idea is to bring back Achimota to its former glory. So that is what we will be talking about this afternoon. Welcome, Prof. Uh, thank you very much, Shanti. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, thank you. So um, what we are gonna do at this point is to have a recap of um, what we talked about in the last you know, um, two meetings that we've had where we talked about the Achimota school lands. I mean, we thank God we are up to speed with the situation on the ground when it comes to the school lands. And then we talked about the endowment fund and I see that steps are being taken to see how best to um, achieve those goals. So um, Prof, what I want to find out is, in a nutshell, can you give us a brief summary of what the situation is with the school lands? Just a brief summary for those who are not here. And um, we'll go on to the endowment fund. Just a brief summary on that. We will then go into the interview and talk about the performance of the students and what we are doing to resolve that. We will hope to use maximum of 45 minutes to finish this part of the meeting today. And then we go to um, the other part of our interview. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Shanti. I, I recall that in our first session where we uh, devoted, I think the first things we talked about were, uh, I'm trying to answer the question, who was an organization? Uh, we give uh, an introduction to the constitution that provides for everybody who has completed uh, some uh, program at Achimota School to be eligible uh, for membership of the old Achimota Association. So that, that was one of the first things we discussed uh, in which we then also focused on our obligations as uh, old Achimotans. Um, the obligation to pay dues and the fact that we pay these dues as individuals and not necessarily as members of a particular group or a subgroup of the association. Uh, so the individual responsibilities were highlighted in our uh, subsequent discussion. And then we moved on to look at the lands. And uh, I mentioned the fact that uh, uh, in the last five years, there have been no less than five court cases uh, involving Achimota School and Achimota Lands. But uh, thankfully, uh, we have prevailed in all of these cases. Uh, they haven't all been concluded yet, but uh, by the Supreme Court ruling of 18th May 2020, uh, we are very much in control. Uh, the ownership of the land is not in doubt. The capacity of the school board to manage the lands uh, is not in doubt has been established by the Supreme Court of Ghana. Uh, we, we then went on to talk about uh, the Endowment uh, Trust Fund 
uh, at the time we completed our last discussion, we only had $42,000 uh, to our name under uh, the Endowment Trust Fund. And uh, we pledged to raise it within one year to a million dollars. And that's something we began work on. On Wednesday, we'll have our AGM at the Agri Chapel, and it will be a major item on the agenda, how to raise $1 million over the next 12 months, and also move beyond that to raise $10 million by the time we celebrate uh, 100 years of Wachimata School. So these have been the main things that we've talked about. Um, and uh, if I remember right, you said today we'll be focusing on the performance of the school. Yeah. I think we also talked a bit about the governance of the school in, in the yeah. first interview. We talked about the governance of the school, the relationship between Achimata School and the GES. And uh, I made mention of the fact that uh, um, the, the challenges that we face come partly from the fact that uh, the school board You are muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we mentioned the fact that uh, uh, the, 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 our relationship with the GES was not the best. And that today, in discussing the uh, performance of the school, I will again stress uh, the governance of the school as a major part of the problem. Uh, where that major part is to do with the absence of uh, independence in managing the school's resources. And the fact that Achimata School, like, uh, is treated like many other schools, uh, even though uh, like some of the other old, old schools, it deserves some special treatment, special in the sense that uh, you put resources in there and therefore you should get the most out of those resources. You can't expect a school that is uh, over 90 years old uh, to pre perform the same as a two-year-old school. And that, that's something that we'll be coming back to. Wonderful. Um, whilst we are at it, are we also able to talk about, because I know the last time you didn't want to go into details about the court case with the um, Tyron Magai. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, um, what is the situation now? I know that the school has been ordered to take them in as the, um, the Rasta guys. They've been ordered to take them on. I know there was an um, announcement that came out that the school authorities were going to appeal. And then I think the Minister of Education said, you guys should slow down a bit. So what is the current situation with regards to um, the Rasta boys, please? So it looks like you, you've begun the main interview now. Yes, we are. We are <laughs> yes, we are flowing, yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. So last time I was reluctant to talk about uh, Rasta That's right. Uh, today I have no inhibitions at all. That's right, uh, feel free. <laughs> the, the court case has been concluded. So I think it's uh, okay to uh, discuss how it went. I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay. And I'm very happy to share my own views uh, from what I saw in the courtroom and outside the courtroom, what I've heard on radio and so on. So as everybody knows, you're me. Yeah, somebody, somebody is able to mute me. I don't know who it is, but- uh, I think, okay, yeah. So um, we, we lost the court case. Uh, soon after we lost the court case on this, it, it, let me put it this way. We had been told to come to court at 9 a.m. on the day of the judgment, I think of the 30th of, uh, 31st of uh, May, we, uh, to be there for judgment at 9 a.m. Uh, I arrived in court at five minutes to nine. Uh, just after nine, we were told that the judge uh, had, was not ready, so we should go and come back at two o'clock. Was like extremely inconvenient for, for many of us, but we, we had no choice but to go and come back at two o'clock. Um, of course, at two o'clock prompt, the judge proceeded to read her judgment. Um, five minutes into the reading, I knew we had lost the case. 
it was obvious that uh, the, the, the line of argumentation that was provided, it was obvious to me that uh, uh, we had lost the case. And so we lost the case. We lost the case for Tyrone, and then we lost for Hineba also. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, I mean, the two cases, earlier on, our lawyer had uh, uh, asked the court to uh, treat them as one case, and the judge had declined. So there were two cases. The justification for um, treating them as separate was because the, 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 they were, what do you call it, the two sued the school independently, and I agree with that. So they had to get their separate judgments. But the two lawyers could have sat together to discuss and uh, appeal to the court to have it as one case. That, that, that's doable, but it didn't happen. And so uh, we lost both cases. And uh, before leaving the uh, uh, court grounds, I had discussed with the lawyer what the options were. Indeed, I also discussed with the school board chair before the judgment came, what do we do in the case of, uh, in the case we lost the case and that uh, we had agreed that if we lost, we would appeal. Uh, the main reason for going to court uh, or for, for us responding to the suit and the main reason for the line that we took basically was that this is not a matter about two young men who want to go to Achimoto school. It's, it went well beyond that. It wasn't about these, you know, I, I'll tell you something. I saw these two young men in court for the first time. They, they are easily like our young men. They look like any young man you find on Achimoto school campus, you know, and there'll be no reason whatsoever for wanting to exclude them from the school. So let no one make a mistake and say that Achimota School wanted to keep two Rastafarian young men out of the school for no good reason. Achimota School was minded to think about the fact that these were two young men who could easily fit in if the wider society would not put pressure on them to want to defy the school's rules. If the wider society with bigger interests, some of it political, some of it social, to, to def want to defy the school's interests and the school's rules. So it was about the school's rules. The judge in her wisdom decided that uh, uh, Achimota school by pushing the school's rules had basically uh, put these two young men at a disadvantage, uh, at a disadvantage in the sense that uh, because of their religion, they were not being allowed to exercise their full rights as Ghanaians, you know, despite the fact that the constitution also gave Achimota school the rights to put in place rules and regulations that guide how you run the school. So for the judge, it was an issue of uh, the rules that you have in place in your school, are they reasonable? Are they overbroad? Are they such that they don't defy the, uh, the rights of people to enjoy their constitutional uh, freedoms? I, I listened to the judge in court, ask our lawyers to show how these rules, the rules of keeping hair low, enhance the welfare of students. You know, enhance the welfare. So as the, uh, our lawyers struggle to say it's, it, 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 uh, what it, it's for the students' welfare, it promotes security, it promotes uh, uh, good behavior and so on. So the judge is asking them to show how keeping your hair short promotes good behavior. I was horrified. I'll be, I'll be very frank, I was horrified. It's like telling a parent who tells his uh, 16 year old son be home by eight o'clock. Tell that period, prove that being home by eight o'clock is good for you. I mean, where in the world does it happen? You know? So the judge effectively, and I'm saying this uh, with full confidence, they effectively made a demand on our, on our lawyers, which she knew they couldn't meet, mm -hmm. to prove that keeping your hair short was good for the students' upbringing was good 
for discipline, was good for welfare. You know, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it's a, the kind of judgment that as a parent, you, you, you will sit back and say, do I even have the right to tell my children anything unless I can prove to them that it's in their interest? You know, that's where, you know, after that, I really knew, sort of, I knew where the case was going uh, because it's, it's, it's a matter of it. I'm giving you an impossible task. I'm giving you a task to prove something that ordinarily you don't have to prove. You have to prove that asking students to keep their hair short is in their interest. It's the interest of public security, the interest of public safety, and so on. Um, so that, that's how it, it ended in court. We decided to appeal, and we promptly we appealed. Interestingly, soon after we announced that we're going to appeal, the Minister of Education then summoned the school board chair to appear in his office by 8 a.m. the following morning. You know, I knew what was going to happen. The minister was going to put pressure on him for us to withdraw the case of the appeal case. You know, I knew where it was going. This is political influence. This is taking away from the school board its capacity to take decisions on behalf of the management of the school. So it had, been, it had moved from being a school business into being a ministerial stroke political business. You know, it took a whole day of negotiating with the Attorney General to get the situation to the form where we have it today that we would withdraw the uh, uh, application for a state of execution so that we retain the right to appeal. Mm -hmm. So we appeal, so the appeal is there. Um, what, is, what is really uh, surprising is the fact that the Minister of Education knew that we had been sued. The Minister of Education watched us go to court and respond with our own lawyers that we are paying for, we respond to the suit as a, as a school board. Not once did he step in and say, uh, don't deal with this, don't go, the, the, the ministry will take care of this. No, he watched us do it. And then when it went the way that uh, suited him, stepped in and ordered the school board interference. And it has a lot to do with governance that I, I, I you know, one of the things I learned in court, I learned in court for the first time that there's a new pre-tertiary education act 2020 and that new pre-tertiary education act is the one that guides the way pre-tertiary education should be managed I, I since heard of it in court i've taken pains to go and find a copy and read it and it, it really helped me to understand a lot of what we see in our schools today. What we see, what, what, what the new act does is basically provide for the uh, running of our pre-university institutions through the Ghana Education Service and the Ministry of Education and other uh, uh, bodies for technical and so on education. The, there's a provision there that for schools, senior high schools, there will be a governing board. There's a provision there for basic schools, there'll be a school management committee. Mm -hmm. But unlike in previous uh, uh, regulations, that clearly specified the role that school boards played, how they were constituted, what kind of powers they had, and so on. This one is silent. Effectively, what the government has done through the Ministry of Education is it has taken upon itself the discretion of how each school will be governed. It's going to be the minister. So when the Minister of Education summoned the school board chair, he knew what he was doing. He knew that now he had given himself the power to do it, you know, and that is what is frightening. It is frightening in the sense that uh, school boards may be constituted any way that uh, the, minister, the Minister of Education deems appropriate or fit. That's what is going to happen. It means that today, 
as we struggle as old students, alumni of Achimota School, alumni of Infancy, alumni of uh, Wesley Girls or whatever school, we struggle to build those schools. Somebody who is putting in far less than we do is going to determine how those schools should be governed. And that is something that we must, whether we are Achimotans, whether we are uh, 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 from Wesley Girls or from Holy Child or from Francis Mwadi School or St. Augustine, wherever. We have to fight it to save our schools. This is the beginning of the politicization of the management of schools in Ghana. And that is one thing I've led. Yes, we are going to court. We are in court. We have appealed in the Rasta case. Uh, we hope that uh, in the appeal, we will be successful. Uh, I can assure you, if we lose in the appeal, we are going straight to the Supreme Court. I can assure all Achimotas, I can assure all Ghanaians that this is not about Achimota school and two young men. No, it's not about Achimota school and two young men. We, we, we are happy to have those two young men in a school so long as they will adhere to our rules. So long as they believe in the things that we believe in. You can't be in Achimota school and not believe in the things we believe in. For me, that's straight. I mean, th there's something that took us to the school. There's something that drew us from wherever we came. I came from Collegon, and I'm proud of it. Yeah. I didn't come to Achimota school to come and check Achimota school. Mm. That was never my intention. It was not my intention to come with my parents to come and change the school. So it should not be any parents' prerogative to come and change Achimota school. We, we will fight that if we have to go to the Supreme Court to resist. Achimota school is there to educate us and make us men and women of repute. Yes. Achimota school is there for all of us, not for any. What the court has done is it has given these two young men superior rights mm -hmm. compared to the other 4,166 young men and women in the school. So these two young men are not obliged to comply with school rules. The others are, and we will resist that. Thank you, thank you. This is <clears throat> wonderful. Um, so currently, where are they? Are they in the school? Are they in school? Oh, yes. Yes, they, they are in school. They, they are day students. They are in the school. And oh, yeah, we are very, okay. yes, we are very happy to have them. Uh, they are most welcome. Uh, we, we do hope that they will benefit from Achimota, being in Achimota school. Has there been any feedback? We, we have appealed to the students to treat them as normal students. Nobody should uh, uh, give them any unnecessary tough time. Uh, we, we would like them to enjoy as much as possible Achimota school. And hopefully by the time they leave, they would know, they would know what being true Achimotans uh, uh, is. Mm. They would know it. Uh, and, and they would know why we are the way we are. They mm. would know why we behave the way we do. Yeah. So um, has there been any feedback about their stay in Achimota so far? Is there anything, have you heard anything? No, I, I've not followed that yet. Okay. And um, if we win the appeal, Mm -hmm. What happens? It means they will have to cut their hair. Okay. It means, it, it first, it means they have to cut their hair, and if they refuse to cut their hair, they have the, to school can, the school can sanction them anyhow. Okay. Wonderful. That is good to know. Um, really good to know. Like you rightly said, nobody is against their coming to the school, but uh, they have to perform and adhere to the rules and what we have all gone through. Mm -hmm. um, Prof, with regards to the performance of the students, we all know it's not been so great for some time now. And um, when you look at the national science quizzes, We've not been up there for some time now. What is the OA's plan to improve the performance of the students? And also, if possible, to get us to win some quizzes. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, the OA for many years, it's on new, for many years, has worked closely 
with the school management to help improve on performance at the school. Uh, you, you've mentioned uh, the National Science and Maths quiz, uh, and then there are many other things. Let me, let me I'll, I'll come finally to the National Science and Maths quiz, but uh, let, me, let me talk about um, the performance. Yeah, there, there, there are two sides to all of this. Uh, the, the structural side of it, uh, the structural side where by that I mean Things like the, the infrastructure uh, available for delivering uh, quality education to the young people. And then uh, things like the quality of teachers, things like the curriculum itself, and then the, the, the time available for pursuing that curriculum, the governance of the school. These are all part of the structural things that I talk about. Uh, for all of these things, actually what have been contributing immensely over the years. Uh, year groups have been uh, repairing laboratories, year groups have been fixing uh, IT centers, year groups have been sponsoring teachers' appreciation, year groups have been you know, doing mini library, swimming pool, uh, assembly hall, chapel, all of it. These are things that year groups have been fixing for many, many years. And so we, we've dealt with, uh, to a very large extent, some of the infrastructure challenges of the school, not completely, but to some extent, uh, we've done that. The, of course, the most significant of all of these is uh, giving to the uh, school a brand new science block, state of the art, most modern thing that you can think about for education in anywhere in Africa. We're giving to the school, costing us over up to almost a million dollars. You know? So um, if you ask, what is the OA doing? On the infrastructure side, we are doing that. Currently, on the executive committee of OA, we have uh, an academic uh, an education uh, subcommittee, uh, which has the responsibility of proposing ways in which we can facilitate uh, improvements in teaching and learning. And uh, one of the things that the uh, committee, the subcommittee, is looking at is how to provide refresher programs for teachers, how to improve the quality of teachers. We don't appoint the teachers. So whatever teachers there are in the school, we believe uh, we can assist the, their performance by providing them with some kind of uh, uh, top-up programs uh, in their various areas, their various disciplines. So we are doing that. Uh, in addition to finding uh, other incentives to uh, to sort of incentivize them to 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 want to uh, give of their best. Uh, a couple of years ago, the headmistress introduced a new program uh, uh, requiring students to have what they called early morning prep. I was not in favor of it. You know, I mean, today in my view, uh, the students spend far more time uh, in the classroom and behind books than we did in our time. They, they spend far more when, they are in when school is in session. So they have extremely little time for doing anything apart from just taking notes in class and listening to their teachers. They have very little time. So there's little time to do groundwork. There's little time to do sports. I mean, so basically what we call extracurricular activities are not on the cards at all. Mm -hmm. Now, having uh, this situation, you are effectively asking these young boys and girls to do in a crowded uh, uh, two and a half year program, many of the things that we spent seven years trying to do. You know, that's, that's, the, that, that's how I see it. And it's quite a tall order. It's a huge challenge on these young minds. And so it's not surprising to me that they struggle. They struggle and they struggle. But of course, one will ask the question, it's only Achimota school that has that problem. It's all the schools, whether it's Presec or Infancy Pum or this school, they all have the same problem. So why should Achimota? I don't think Achimota school is performing worse than many other schools. I've taken pains to look at performance in most of the schools in Greater Accra, St. Mary's, Accra Girls, Accra Academy, Presec. I've looked at their results. They are not too different. Presec does much better than Achimota in science, Achimota does much better than Presec in the arts. Achimota does much better than all the other schools when it comes to the arts. So 
Uh, but the, the overall performance is not fantastic. Uh, let me see if I can share this slide with you. Uh, can, 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 I, can you see my screen? Um, no, we can't see your screen. Um, okay. You said you have disabled my screen sharing. Yeah, okay. you, he, will let, he will authorize you very soon. Uh, the problem for Hashimoto is lack of consistency. So one year they do well, then the following year they fall uh, very, very low. That's, that's the problem that uh, you have in Achimota. So it's not consistent. Uh, and when, when it's bad, it's bad. Uh, the, the, the challenge for us as old students is how do you live with a school that is so well endowed, so well endowed, you know? So mm -hmm. we, we don't complain because, eh, the, 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 you know, we complain because you have far more resources than all other schools. You, you have far, many more classrooms than all other schools. You can see your screen now, by the way. Okay, let me see. Um, can you see, can you see the screen now? No, it's not on. Uh-oh. Share screen. Yeah. You can see it? Yes. Okay. So, so these are the, so what, what I meant by um, uh, inconsistent. Look at uh, this, these results. Um, what's the results for 2015, 2016, 2016? You know, so in 2015, only 17 students out of uh, uh, 806 obtained eight A1s. Then 2016, after a lot of harassment, a lot of noise from uh, at the school board, so we get an improvement to 31. And then a, a year later, it drops to 16. And then 2018 goes to only two. <laughs> That's what I mean by the inconsistency. <clears throat> so and we, we, we've uh, dealt with these challenges for the last two, three years. You know, uh, we go to the school board meetings, the results are presented to us, we look at them, we give suggestions on how to improve. We, 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 we realized, for example, that uh, many of the kids that were not doing very well in core mathematics uh, were from the arts section. And, and the, the students doing arts, uh, many of them had this uh, uh, fear of mathematics and uh, science. Uh, and so, uh, they didn't pay much attention to the core mathematics and they will easily fail. Uh, let me see if I can show you the results from um, for 2020. Um, let's see. So these are, the, these are the 2020 results. Um, so core mathematics, which every student has to take and you need a credit in it to go to university. So 2020. I will present 1,129 students. Uh, also, the total number of students that are taking the exam in preparation for university. Uh, 260 get A1, and then 110 get B2. Uh, what is interesting is that D7, E8, E9, so you don't get the credit. These, are, these, these form about 22.4%. So, but, so these, so you go to Achimota school after three years there, you don't get a credit in coma. So regardless of what you do in all the other, you, you are not eligible for tertiary education. And that is problematic. It, it is too high a percentage. I, I look at many other schools, it's about 15%, 10%. Uh, but for Achimota, with all the resources that we have, 22.4 is too high for that. And, and so what do we need to do to improve the results in core mathematics? Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we have thought about bringing a psychologist there who will take out the fear uh, from these students. Take out the fear from these students. Uh, last year, we tried it. Uh, I'm yet to find out whether it, it is going to have any uh, impact this year or not. 
Uh, but that it, it is these kinds of things that bring about the change. So you look at English language. Uh, you have 78 getting A1, so it's, which is great. Uh, most people are getting C3, uh, uh, 499 or 500 people are getting that. Half of the students are getting C3. That's okay. The, you still have people who are not getting the credits, B7, E8, F9. You go to social studies. Uh, here, most of the students doing arts will do very well. Uh, science students, some of them will do well here. Uh, it is good to see many of them will score a good grade, which will improve their chances of going to university with social studies. Integrated science, the same thing, you know, uh, if you have elective mathematics, so they could be doing quite well. I mean, one of the things I've been proud of at Achimota School is the fact over the years, the performance in elect elective maths has been fairly, fairly decent uh, over the years. And so clearly th there's something that they are doing there. If they could do the same for the core maths, you will find many more young men and women from Achimota School in university. Can you still see my screen? Yeah, we. I got I got a message that shared his post. Can you see it? Yes, we are still on the old screen. So this, this is biology. Can, can you see? Oh, so you can't see all the things I've been showing you. I, I, I have a message on my screen that says sharing his post. Yeah. So. So what you have on there is still the OSC analysis. Okay, Let, I don't know what to do. Um, let me see. Can you see my screen? Can you yeah. see that? Biology. Can, biology, you can see that one? Yeah. Okay, all right. So I, I, before then, I've shown you the uh, core maths and uh, you can see this one. Yeah, you can see the core maths. Yeah, okay. So I was making the point that uh, all these ones, all these are from uh, uh, D7, E8, F9. Mm -hmm. They don't have the credits in core mathematics. So are not eligible so for special education. That's not the point I was making. Yeah. Uh, English language, there's still a group there that, that don't have any credit, and so are not eligible for tertiary education. Uh, social studies is a lot better. Uh, integrated science, it's not too bad. You know, elective maths is one area that Achimata School seems to always do quite well uh, in elective maths. The number of people that are scoring very high uh, uh, marks there. So it's something that we need to find out exactly what is it that is working for the school and then keep it up. Biology, uh, chemistry. Another area that we suffer a lot is physics. Uh, and whenever you talk about physics, everybody says, oh, it's the same in all other schools. It's the same in all other schools. You know? So yes, if it's the same in all other schools, we're going to find a way of improving the teaching of physics in our schools. It is not an actual problem. It is a general problem. As a niche, if we don't solve it, uh, it will come to haunt, haunt all of us. And so we need, we need to deal with it. So that, that is it with, uh, uh, with, with the performance. And then you talked about what we are doing about uh, quizzes. Uh, so the, the National Science and Maths Quiz. Uh, for a long time, for a long time, um, Achimata School didn't feature uh, well. Uh, we, 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 we seldom went past the regional uh, stage. And then when you got to the national stage, on a few occasions that we did, uh, we didn't do well. Last year, I'm very happy to say the OA step team, uh, we provided incentives to the school, uh, we provided incentives, we, we bought laptops for all the kids who were uh, competing, uh, we, we, we provided support to the teachers, we provided books to be used, and then even when they were housed at the University of Ghana campus, we supported them logistically. Uh, we made a number of commitments that would materialize if they should win. Uh, we did go far. I, I was at all of the contests at the national level. Uh, we got to the semi-final stage when we, we met uh, uh, at the Saddle College and then um, were thrown out. This year, 
the competition has started and I've made a number of commitments on behalf of ACRES to uh, the uh, teachers who are handling it. Uh, it's my hope that uh, they will go much further than they did last year. The commitments that we made, the laptops that we bought, they are still there. Uh, I've, I've told the students that if they win, they can keep their laptops. Uh, one one, one uh, uh, promise that we, we, we made last year and we are making again this year is if they win, each of them, each of the four contestants will go to university from first year to the fourth year at the expense of the OA. Oh. Yes. Not so, bad. yeah. So, so just win. And then your, your second, your, your university education is OA business. O, the OA will sponsor you through four years of university in Ghana. And we, we are looking for uh, uh, potential sponsors that would help the teacher, that helps the students the most to go and spend up to uh, four weeks in the UK on a study tour. So there's an incentive for both the teacher or the teachers and the students to, to win. It's not simply an incentive to, to participate, but an incentive to win. So yes, the OA is concerned. The OA is doing something about it. And I do hope that uh, uh, if we need your help to make these things uh, come true, uh, you'll, be, you'll be willing to help. I mean, we'll be willing to be a platform through which that information will go out and obviously the little we can do to help we will definitely do to help um so yes you have outlined or told us what it is that they always do to try and remedy the situation um I, I, and you have done it for a while and you, we are still struggling. I mean, to the extent of bringing in a psychologist and uh, we are not still seeing what we have to see. Is it because of the caliber? Somebody's asking if it's because of the caliber of students who are enrolled in the school or it's just that the teaching has to be looked into in a better way. I mean, what is it? Is it a methodology of teaching or the caliber of students that come to the school? I don't think I'm qualified to <laughs> make a, any particular pronouncement on this. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I look at the caliber, I don't think the students that I meet at Achimata School are any different from those who go to Wesley Girls or go to Adisadol or go to Presec. I don't think there's any difference. Uh, they come from the same schools. Uh, they, they come from the same background socially. Um, so it can, I mean, th there are many more students in Achimota school than in those schools. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot more crowding, a uh, lot more overcrowding in Achimota school than in those schools. But uh, it's, the, the difference is not that significant. So I don't think it is the background. Um, the, the, the challenge, you know, and as I said earlier, I don't think Achimota's uh, performance that we may not be happy with is far worse than Presec or far worse than uh, Wesley Girls. No, I don't think so. I've, I've looked at their results uh, and uh, they also have their ups and downs. Uh, they also have their challenges. We talk about ours. Other schools don't talk about theirs. You know, so I'm happy to sit here and discuss with you the challenges. In many other schools, the old students are not organized well enough to pay attention to it. Uh, I don't know if you saw the video that went viral from Kofodia Sectech about a week ago. You know, it was old students who went to their school and saw the, the, the shameful yeah. conditions under which the boys were being kept. Yeah. And did this video which went viral. If many more old students of other schools showed interest in the other schools, I tell you, we can fix the problem. Okay. You know, we can fix the problem. So I, I think it's good that we are asserting ourselves as old Achimotans. Um, we, and we should do it. 
there are many who want to stop us from asserting ourselves and we, we, we shouldn't allow them, whether it's for political reasons or any other reasons, we shouldn't allow them. At the end of the day, I say to everybody that old Achimotans are the only permanent stakeholders in the school. You know, if you take all the other schools, the mission schools, the church is the permanent stakeholder. Mm -hmm. uh, so the old students play a role but largely on the back of the church. In Achimota, we have no church to rely on. We, as old students, are the only ones who have a permanent interest in the school. Nobody else. The, the, the state should be, the state should be, but the state has been, the, the, the state is a much more diffuse character. And so cannot express interest or articulate its interest in Achimota school the way the Methodist church can or the Catholic Church can, or the Presbyterian Church can, which leaves us across as the only. Mm. So uh, the role we play in Achimota School should be different from the role the, the roles are that other alumni play in their schools, because there's no church behind us. It is just us, us versus the rest. One thing that I learned from this uh, Rasta uh, story, it brought together many people. It brought together a coalition of many different interests, you know, many different interests. Uh, people who genuinely believed in the Rasta course, have no problem with that. There are people who genuinely believed in minority courses, I don't have any problem with that. Mm -hmm. But it also attracted a large coalition of all the Achivota haters. Yes. So, 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 so you got you 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 got the. The, the, the Achimota haters joined riding on the back of two small boys, you know, and, 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 and they, but they even managed to get Achimotans to join them. <laughs> they had Achimotans who, for whatever reason, I can, I can, some, I can speculate on what some of their reasons are. They were able to join them. I saw an Achimotan right that for the first time, he now sees what racist school he went to. When he was there, he didn't see it. That when he left, and he saw that Achimota who was racist, you know, and, and I've seen all these arguments about deconstruction and uh, uh, decolonization and the uh, disruption. And so I know, I know the literature very, very well. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that people are capitalizing on these things, bringing foreign ideas or new ideas from outside and using them to pursue a course that has nothing to do with these two small boys, you know? And these are the people that we must fight. You know, the, 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 the Rasta boys have shown us who are true enemies are. We always knew they were there. They, they, are, in, they are in public the public services, they are in homes, they are in ministries, they are in the parliament, they are all over the place. We've got to find a way of dealing with these things. Wonderful, it looks like, I mean, I watched an interview where Tyron Magai was saying that he's the solution to the quiz championship. So uh, we might as well um, have that at the back of our minds. Um, who decides? Is it Achimota School that recruits teachers or is the Ghana Education Service? Every teacher at Achimota School is an employee of Ghana Education Service. So there is no way Achimota School can headhunt teachers. We are by law not allowed to. Wow. Wow. May, so, I, make, may I make a comment, uh, Prof? You know, this uh, school, uh, you pick four students who go on this competition and I don't know what criteria you use to pick them, but maybe the kids who have the best uh, marks and so on and so forth. But the kids who have the best marks may not be the, 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 the right ones to present publicly in a, in a, in a situation like that. I think that uh, the emphasis should be on uh, trying to develop the broad, uh, the, the top of the bell curve of the students. That is, the, the very smart ones are going to do well wherever they are. It's the bulk of the students that I think the emphasis uh, uh, should be on. As far as the English language is concerned, 
Well, if you if you listen to anything in Ghana, whether it's uh, the radio, television, or political speech, it's all in tree. Most of us don't speak the lingo. And, you know, in our time, in the 50s and 60s, you had to speak English, you know. And so I think that um, some of that attitude of speaking only tree is percolating down into the system, you know, and, and those are areas that should be looked at. Thank you. Thank you. So it looks like whichever direction we go, we may never really win because we have the students coming in and it's Ghana Education Service that decides who goes to Achimota School. Am I right there? Yeah, but I, I mean, I think uh, it's uh, premature to throw in the towel. Uh, it's our responsibility as uh, active stakeholders to fight for the reform of the education service. Uh, education is one area where we've seen the most reform in the last 20 years. Mm. Um, every few years, you hear about some changes being done in the school system, new curriculum, new training for teachers, new examination system for, for teachers, and so on and so forth. Uh, every few years, you find that. And yet, um, we see the results uh, not showing very well in the performance of students. No, it's not just Achimota, all, all across the country, you know. So the challenge is what can we do, whether as parents, as alumni, uh, or just as ordinary Ghanaians, to help direct the type of change that you need in education. Today, almost every change that it takes place in education is dictated by one group or the other, whether it's teachers or parents who don't want to pay fees or government that wants more control. It's always, every change is in the interest of some particular group. So if that group is the loudest, that group is the one that gets the kind of change that benefits it. It's about time that we reform education that thinks about quality. It's about access, it's also about quality. Nobody is thinking about, okay, so now we put thousands and thousands of kids through these schools. Are we providing, are we going to produce the next generation of researchers? Are we going to produce the next generation of public sector managers? What quality are they, are, 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 do we expect from them? Are we producing young men and women who will not only excel in Ghana, but excel globally? anywhere in the world that it will be seen to be good professionals. You know, that's what we, we don't think about that. We think only about the number of children who went through this, the number of children who went through that, the number of teachers who passed this exam. Last week, I saw that uh, in the teachers promotion exams that uh, were held, hmm, uh, more than 30% of the teachers failed the exam. You know, so clearly, and it's something we've been saying for many years. There is a problem in our classrooms. There, is, there are many people who are teaching in our schools today, not because they are proficient in teaching, but because that's the only job they can find. That's, that, and because they have a relative in the system. So they are teach, they're teaching our kids. You know, it's about time that the ministry sat back and said, look, let's, let's, let's have a system, a proper system that takes into account the views of many, many people, not just those of us who are managing the system, but the, the people who are also stakeholders, those who will employ them, the, the, the parents of these kids. I, I can't see anywhere in the world where you can reform a school system without the inputs of parents. I can't see it, but in Ghana, that's what we do. Mm. Parents don't matter, and we reform. Alumni don't matter. In today's current reforms being pursued. The design is to water down the influence of alumni associations as, as much as possible. And this is what we should resist. So I will not throw in the towel now. It is when we've lost all the different battles in order to gain control of our schools, then we say, yes, fine, we've lost it. You, you know, my brother, uh, Roko, who taught physics at Legon, told me a long time ago that 
they couldn't really judge the university students during the first year, at least in science, because a lot of them, even if they had A's, had never been in a lab before. They didn't know what uh, uh, a pipette or slide rule was. They learned from the book and they could, they could regurgitate it. And he said it was only after the first year at Legon where you could, you could judge the quality of the uh, student because they all came from uh, different backgrounds. Some schools, GIS and the Tema school, then perhaps Hachimoto had labs and so on and so forth when there were some other schools that didn't have it. Is that still the case, Prof? It, it is still indeed the case. Um, I, I was looking at, uh, I was talking to the science teachers in the school a few weeks ago. Uh, it was in connection with the new science lab that we had given to the school. And the school had sent us uh, a long list of uh, chemicals and other equipment to buy uh, for the lab. And I had said to them, but this should be the responsibility of the Ghana Education Service. And uh, the response to me was, um, yes, it should be, but the GES will not supply. And indeed, the students doing chemistry, the students doing physics, the students doing biology, agric science, they are unlikely to do any practical work in the first two years at Achimoto School. And even in the third year, the only practicals that they'll be doing will be just before their examinations. And why, why will they not be doing it practical? They don't have any chemicals in the chemistry lab. I mean, I mean the, 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 the reagents are not simply not there, so they can't do any practicals. When the, when the, when the West African Examinations uh, Council uh, gives them a list of chemicals to uh, provide for the examinations, then the teachers know roughly what kind of questions uh, the students will be asked for the practicals, then they hurriedly go and prepare them for these. So the only practicals that they'll be doing will be in, in, in response to the likely questions that they will face in the examination. So yes, I agree with you. Students doing science in our schools do extremely little practical work. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Um, time is fast spent, but we really have to um, get a good summary on this particular topic. So it looks like what we really have to do as stakeholders is to push for that autonomy. Some level yes. of autonomy. Yes, uh, we, 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 that, that, that's, that's uh, one thing that uh, uh, we, uh, on the 24th of June, uh -huh. we, we are convening a meeting of uh, alumni uh, presidents from 26 schools. Okay. Uh, 26 schools. Um, Infantipum, Wesley Girls, Adisado, St. Augustine's, uh, Infantiman, St. John's, Second D, uh, Archbishop Quarters, and then Prempe, Upukuari, um, Mawili, Bishop Herman, I think uh, Accra Academy, St. Mary's, Accra Girls, Presec. You know, we are meeting to discuss some of these issues that uh, we've been talking about today and what we as a group can do to uh, help improve the situation. It's a, it's a very, very difficult, you know, we, we are talking as if it's an Achimota problem. It's not an Achimota, it's, it's a Ghana problem. Mm. It's a Ghana problem. We at Achimota see it uh, because it's right here in Accra and because we are um, close to the school and get to know what's happening in the school, um, we talk about it much more than others do. I've spoken to uh, year, uh, 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 presidents of uh, MOBA, um, Wesley Girls, Holy Child. They, they, feel, they feel the same challenges. They feel the same pressures. Wow. So, so, so what we are pushing for is a reform that allows the, 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 the governance of the school, each school, to be able to mobilize resources. Uh, it will include being able to appoint heads of those schools. It will include being able to appoint teachers. These are things that will uh, meet with a lot of resistance. I mean, it will be naive on our part to uh, imagine that uh, um, 
GES will accept that uh, smiling. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, but we've got to show that uh, a well-structured school system, a properly governed school system, is much more likely to mobilize the resources required to run our schools. It's much more likely to ensure that labs operate. The science lab that we've given at Chimota School, there is absolutely no way that GES can provide what it takes to run it. it mm -hmm. so, so by not allowing us to run it the way it should be run, yeah. by not allowing us to mobilize the resources required to run the lab or the labs there, basically you are saying, we don't care anything about science education. And it's about time our scientists, our scientists made the point that without practical work, without practical work, chemistry is of no, it's of no, no, no use to anybody. Hmm? I see Prof. Adai means that I'm, I'm trying to provoke him to react. <laughs> Prof. Adai means, um, you are on mute, sir. You, you, you go on with your submission. I'm, I'm listening. And, uh, yeah. taking so, 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 so basically, that, that's the point. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Let me make this comment. Um, you said you had looked at the school's performance against schools in Greater Accra. Um, I know you've looked at other schools, but I don't think it goes far enough. We shouldn't be comparing ourselves to schools in Greater Accra. We should be comparing ourselves to schools that we consider to be our peers. Wesley girls, etc. Most of which are not in Great Accra. I'm talking about schools in Cape Coast. I'm talking about St. Peter's, St. Rose's, Opokwari, Prempe, GSTS, St. John's Secondary, um, and then Tamale Secondary. So they are spread around the country. And if you look at the performances over the years, holistically. You see that we have a problem when we compare ourselves with our peers. So we may have to go uh, you know, further than that. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you that um, uh, we, we if, once we begin to look at uh, those other schools that you mentioned, uh, they, they, but even then, the um, performance against those schools uh, is quite inconsistent. There are times when they do far better than us, and there are times when we do better than them. You know? So I agree with you that it's, it's important to compare over a broader uh, subsection of schools. I agree with you entirely. Uh, we, my point is we, we keep going up and down. Uh, and we need to find a, uh, a way to get a good grip on it so that we are right. able to maintain the performance. Yeah. To be able to stay at the top. Okay. A question that came up was the lawyers that we use. Um, Achimota, uh, the lawyers that we use, are they across? Do we use Accra lawyers or? You mean for the Rasta case? For the Rasta case and maybe other cases that we've been involved in, have they been across? Over, over the years, we've used many different uh, Accra. We, we've used many different lawyers. Um, we've used Accra lawyers for most of our land cases. Um, we've had uh, ups and downs with them. They, 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 they have been those who were very committed to uh, the course of the school and those who showed uh, much less uh, commitment to the course of the school. Uh, in the last four years, uh, the, we, we worked closely. The school's lawyers uh, were Ben Sienchu Lecha and uh, uh, Ankuma uh, Bella, and uh, they, 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 they performed wonderfully for us. Uh, most of the success that we achieved on the land front uh, came uh, when we began using them. Um, I must also say that uh, we were able to uh, get their services because old Achimotans provided financial support uh, to meet the, uh, the, the expenses, the, the costs associated with their services. So yes, a combination of things, 
uh, Akres willing to pay and then having good lawyers uh, has helped a lot. In the Rasta case, we used a lawyer who used to represent us when he was at uh, Ben Siencho. Uh, he, he, so we worked closely with him. Uh, in fact, the success of our case uh, was largely due to him. And so because we knew him very well and we knew what he was capable of, uh, we, we went, we continued with him. He's not an Akura, but he has Akura children. Okay. And he has a Chimota at heart. I exactly. Mean. I mean, he has shown far more commitment to Achimota and his courses than I've seen many Akuras do. Thank you. There, 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 there's no point in going to court with a lawyer who doesn't believe in your case anyway. Yes, yes, truly so. Yes. Um, it looks like um, time is fast spent and we have to um, move on to the next segment of the interview. Um, you've been the president of the OE for, I mean, you're in your second term of being the president now. Actually, I'm in my third term. Oh, really? Yes. Each, each term is two years. Oh, okay. So third term. Oh. I mean, my third term as we pray, my third and last term. You must be doing something right. <laughs> no, they, my they, question they, is so... They, they, they couldn't find people who were interested, that's all. Oh, no. From what I hear, you are good at what you do, so... I guess... Um... From, what, from what I see, they couldn't find people who were interested. <laughs> <laughs> so, Prof, what would be some of the highlights of your of your term, I mean, of your presidency? What would you say are some of the hi highlights of your presidency? And then at the same time, what would be some of the, the lows of your presidency? Hmm. That's it. What did you achieve that really excited you? And what did you see that made you sad? I, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm in a position to talk about what we have achieved. Uh, I can tell about what we have done, uh, but achieve is a, a much stronger word. Uh, so what we've the one the one thing that I enjoy the most mm -hmm. was celebrating Achimota at ninety. You know, so let, let's put it this way: we were we were lucky to come into office just before Achimota uh, turned ninety years old, and uh, we put in place a committee uh, to manage events and so on. Uh, the committee was excellent. Uh, they delivered fantastic products. Uh, the most important of this was well, it brought Achimotans together uh, for a whole year. A whole year, I saw many different activities from the beginning of the year when we had a health walk through the Founders Day, through the uh, uh, um, disco night and through the uh, check service through all of those things the ending with the uh, presidential ball everything that we did was very very well patronized Achimotans spent money on oa events it, that for me uh, a major thing that uh, we, we we could do to bring Achimotans together you know uh, the, the enthusiasm with which they did things, you know. Um, people came all the way from uh, the UK, from the US uh, in July of uh, 2017 to celebrate uh, with their uh, classmates, to celebrate with the uh, people that they knew from school, uh, various things for the homecoming. Uh, that was probably the most enjoyable uh, part of all that we've been through in these uh, five years. So yes, uh, it's been a very, very, I mean, um, being able to link up with uh, Achimotans, you know, for me at a, at a very personal level, today uh, I see Akres who finished in the last five years. And I see those who finished in the, in the 50s and we are able to talk about one common thing, a school, you know, we are able to talk about the school and what we can do to make the school better, you know, and being able to identify across in various places is, uh, has been the highlight for me. It's been a, a very personal uh, uh, source of happiness and joy. 
Thank you. Thank you. And and your and your lows, I mean the lows. <laughs> uh, what has been the lowest point? I'm, I'm you know, I have one more year to go. I, I don't know if something will come up in the in the one year to go that um uh, will but I mean there there are always challenges. Um watching watching the way the press handled these two uh, Rasta cases mm. uh, what was, a, was a very low point for me. Um, watching the kind of discussions orchestrated uh, on national television and so on, watching the way politicians try to take advantage of it to uh, settle their personal scores okay. was for me a very low point. Uh, so yes, um, we, we've been through many different challenges, um, but there are some that clearly are unnecessary. Um, the, the land cases showed the problems that we have with uh, governance in this country. Uh, they showed how the rule of law uh, has been toyed with over, the, over many, many years. It's not anything new. Um, you know, people, people act with impunity. They know the land that does not belong to them. I mean, the, the Osu Mankralo case is a classic example of a chief who chooses to hide behind uh, a, a, a badly organized land uh, ma uh, management system, land governance system. So he's able to team up with individuals at the Lands Commission and steal 172 acres of land. And the fact that this went on and nobody saw it. Nobody, and when you went to court, nobody did it. You know, these are things that make you wonder, are we really serious in this country? That you can steal 172 acres of public land and nothing, nothing happens to you, you know? Um, these are challenges. It is our responsibility as old Achimotans to ensure that never again, last time I showed you the uh, map of the school lands, Mm. I showed you which areas were still unencumbered. Yeah. It is our responsibility and that of our children and our grandchildren to protect that land. The pressure on them will grow with time. The pressure on our children to sell, to give away will grow. People will hide behind governments. Government officials will use their influence, their mm. powers, the authority that they have, they can be police officers, they can be army officers, they can be judges. They would use it to take away the land. They will use it to take away. The land. It's for us to fight and fight and fight. Once we give up the fight, unlike other schools, there's no church that's going to take up the uh, struggle. There's no church. If old Achimotans give up, we've, the school has lost it. There's no church to stand behind them to stand behind the school. So it is a responsibility for every Achimoto, whether you have money or you don't have money. If you don't have money, you have, a, you, have, you have lips, you can talk. You can talk about it. If you have money, pay some money into the land fund. Let us defend it. If we keep quiet in another 20 years, there will be no land available to Achimoto school. And that for me is something that uh, uh, we Achimotans should see, not simply as a low point, but a low point from which we have to rise again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This brings to um, the end of our interview uh, with the Prof on Achimota issues. Thank you very much, Prof, for your time. Thank you for the insights you've given us today. Um, in fact, we should all just give him like an applause for such a wonderful job and all that he's been able to educate us on with regards to what he wants to Prof. Thank you very much. The conversation is still ongoing. We are going to bring on more across in the future to talk about Achimota issues and general issues related to Achimota and um, how best we can work around the conversation 
to get to a place where we are comfortable, to get to a place where we know that we've made a difference. When we were in Form 1, Accra to Aquacon was our house pastor, and he taught us a song. He said it should not be said that it was during our time that Atumota collapsed. So that is something that we all have to <coughs> deal with, we have to work with and realize that so far as we are alive, so far as we are well, we have to give back to Achimota. We have to protect the innocent students of Achimota School. That is where we find ourselves and that is what we can do to help. So thank you. And this brings to the end of our interview, of our discussion with the prof. We are going to go on to the second stage, which is we getting to know our president better. So this ends it now. <laughs>